This is for uh, Aditya, who has some issue we can't join today. So this amplitude is small. Therefore, we say this is a soft sound. Whereas this amplitude is large. Therefore, we say this is a loud sound. The time period and the frequency and the wavelength, they are all the same. Thank you, sir. All right. So if you uh, guys, can I move ahead? Yes, so sir. Yes. if you look at these two waves, right? Uh, Riddhi, talk to me. Do you think the height of the wave is same or different? So I think the height of the wave is same. Same. Okay. Approximately, I can also see height of the wave is same. So what's different in the first one and second one? Well, the frequency. Frequency. The number of oscillations that are happening. See, both of them are within the same time. Okay. The uh, Here we have kept it for, let's say, two seconds. Okay. So if you see here, we have, this is like um, one wave, two waves, two and a quarter, okay? So many oscillations are happening. Whereas if you see here, many more oscillations are happening in the given time, okay? So we say the second wave has got more frequency than the first wave, okay? So we say the first wave frequency and pitch are one and the same. So we say less frequency means low pitch, more frequency means higher frequency means higher pitch. Okay. Just make a note of this too. Did you guys make a note of this? The one minute. Yeah.
So the question to you is this. So when you say there are two sounds and they are of different pitch, okay? Hmm? When you say two sounds are of different pitch, can you say that their wavelengths can be same? No, sir. Okay, you can't say. The answer is no. Can their time periods be same? Yes. How can their time periods be same, ma'am? They are having same... They are having different pitch, na? If they have different frequency, that means... They have different frequency, means one fellow is doing 10 oscillations one second, other fellow is doing 100 oscillations per second. Therefore, the time periods cannot be same, okay? No. But can their amplitudes be same? Yes. 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 Okay. They can, they all can have the same height. But the minute the worm, here this is like an earthworm. Okay. It's going very slow. Whereas the other fellow is like a humming bee, right? Humming bee is like gizz. Too many oscillations is doing per second. Okay. So, uh, you, you can't have the same time period, same wavelength. Okay? Uh, if you say they are, both of them are having different pitch or different frequency. All right. And you can make a note of this also, a small note. Just so that, see what happens is when you uh, take the information passively, then you may not register the fact that if they are of two different frequencies, they cannot have the same wavelength. So this is like a question for me to test or draw, draw your attention to the fact that different frequency means different wavelength, means different time periods. But yes, it is possible that their height can be the same. It need not be, but it is possible. All right, guys. So, <clears throat> we have seen that uh, speed of sound is different in different media. Okay, I don't want you to make a note of this table and all. But a uh, couple of things which you can just see is that in uh, solid, the speed is the highest. It is like uh, around 4,000, 5,000 meters per second. In solids, the speed is not uniform. Aluminium may highest high followed by steel and iron very close to each other, 5,900. Brass and glass, glass is the slowest in solid, 3,980. Just have that in your mind. The range is in around 5,000 to 6,000 meters per second in solids. If you look at water, sea water has higher speed, 1,531. And uh, normal water is around 1,500, 1,498. Okay, So the speed of uh, sound in sea water is higher than speed of sound in normal water. Okay, I want you to kind of have a look, uh, uh, you know, remember that. And if you look at uh, uh, gas, in gas, uh, the speed of in air, it is around 346. 346 meters per second. Normally, we say 330 meters per second. Okay, but uh, maybe the temperature is different here. So remember, it's around 330 meters per second in air. All right. So this is uh, with respect to speed. And naturally, if you want to generalize it, we simply say speed is highest in solids, followed by liquids, followed by gas. It's not a very, I mean, we are trying to tell average, okay? Average solid will have the highest speed, followed by liquid and gas, okay? So, one of the important effects that you have to learn, there are a couple more, but for your grade, only one effect I'm going to teach you is called the reflection of wave, okay? 
So what we have seen is just like when you take a laser and shine it towards a mirror, right? We see the laser striking the mirror and coming back. And we have seen plane mirrors, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, right? So similarly, the sound wave also is following the same law. Okay, so if you have a sound wave, if I'm here shouting and it is hitting a surface, maybe a wall or a, some other reflecting surface, right? At a particular angle, angle of incidence is theta i. Okay, uh, another person who is here will be able to listen to the reflected ray. Okay, so and it will be following the principles of laws of reflection. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection for sound also. Okay, so two takeaways sound waves also reflect like light. Sound wave follows the principle of angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. The same concept applies true here. You can just make a quick note about the first diagram, second diagram, third diagram, not required. Shall I move ahead, guys? No, one moment. Okay. Only the first diagram is required, guys. Don't worry about circular, plane, and reflected wave patterns. Not required for you. That for light also the same, right? Same diagram is true for light too. Like, for example, if you have a, a laser, right? We have in plane mirrors, did you guys study mirrors at all? Yes, sir, we're doing it in school. Yes. Okay. You have something called plane mirror. You know, you have seen all that, no? Plane mirror, may, we have seen our own uh, topras and all that stuff. So, any one place we put the normal, okay? And then you take a, a wave of light, okay? Uh, like a laser and shine it here, right? Mind you, from the normal to the incident ray. This is called the incident ray. Okay. This is called the angle of incidence. Theta i. So that laser light, you are putting it at, let's say, 30 degrees. Okay. So the angle of reflection also will be 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Okay. So that's one of the, uh, the properties of The light. laws of reflection. So it's called laws of reflection. Okay. This also will be 30 degrees. Okay. Not this. Don't. This is not the angle of incidence. This is not the angle of reflection. This one is with respect to the normal. Okay. The incident ray and the reflected ray. Okay. So the same thing is applicable for sound also. Okay. So here if I say ba, then the sound waves are traveling like this. I have drawn longitudinal waves. Okay. They'll hit the reflecting surface and then they'll go like this. Okay, and this person can hear it. Okay, so if you see this, there will be a series of compressions and rarefactions. So this is a compression. This is the next compression. This is the next compression. Okay, so drawing like this is difficult. So what we do is we just say like this. Okay, so you have a series of compressions. It goes, hits the surface and it bounces back. Following the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Did you get this guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
the reason we study about this is when we talk about um, okay so here uh, polished surface any polished surface hard objects like our tiled floor it reflects light our ceiling reflects light glass reflects light wood absorbs light wood is not a good uh, you know reflector okay that's why if you carpets curtains upholstery uh, you know if you have sofas they all absorb the sound they don't bounce it back okay they are like uh, curtain no curtain cannot it's not a hard surface it cannot reflect sound back okay so they can only be reflected by uh, polished surface ah uh, yeah polished surface means yes where, uh, the surface is smooth like a concrete wall glass mirror tiled floor even surfaces they can reflect the sound waves all right so now uh, i am just showing you a diagram where we are talking about reverberation okay so reverberation is like uh, if you look at this speaker here okay and supposing is making a sound high right sound is going in all directions okay so sound is not like it has to come directly from him to you not required okay sound is traveling all around you there's no uh, no, you, you cannot stop the vibrations from traveling in all direction. Okay. But if you look at this, this is the direct sound coming directly shortest from him to you. We call that as a direct sound. Okay. Whereas when he's speaking, some sound waves are going, hitting the ceiling. And again, it is traveling back to him. So the, the concept of reflection is happening here. My bath karam, it's hitting the ceiling and it is reaching the user. Okay, I have a wall behind. So sound is generated, it's going back. It's hitting the wall back. And because the angle is like this, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, the sound is going up. Again, angle of incidence, angle of reflection, sound is coming here and then back. So this listener is able to hear sound coming from different, different bouncing, bounced off rays, sound waves. Are you able to follow this, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so what happens is it's not just the original sound, even the reflected sound is hearing. Okay, so if all these sound waves are reaching around the same time, right, obviously they cannot reach at the same time because they're traveling different distances. Okay, so this reflected ray fellow will take a little longer because maybe it's traveling two meters plus three meters plus two meters, so maybe seven meters. Whereas this is only 5 meters. So he'll hear that first. And this guy is hearing sh in short duration. This guy is hearing in little bit lag. Okay. So the sound is going to persist. He's hearing the original sound, maybe ma, and then the second ma and the third ma. So all put together, he hears a pleasant sound. Mm, it is persisting in his mind. Okay. So that persistence of sound in a human ear in our conscious, in our in our memory, is called the reverberation. Are you following this? So, so basically, all the reflected rays of sound they come into our ear at once. As well. Yes. Okay. So, what happens is, uh, sometimes when you listen to music, no, you feel that music is very rich. Okay. It, it, you feel that uh, the, the acoustics of the room is very good. You feel that the guitar, the violin, and the, the voice of the singer, it's all very rich. Okay. What it means is that room is so perfect that the, ref, the ref, reflections are good. Okay. Because you are listening to the sound, multiple sounds, you know, coming to you in a particular pleasing manner. Okay. If the room is bad, it can sound horrible. So not all reverberations are good. So if the room is designed nicely, if the reflections are sound are happening in a nice way, so that it, it looks uh, like it, it is pleasing to you, we say, huh, this sound has, this room has got good acoustics. Okay. Uh, 
So, but what is reverberation means? It is it is the persistence of sound. I'll write it down for you here. That persistence in the sense it remains in your ear for some time because of yeah. the different reflections. Yeah. Stuff. So that some time is not like five seconds, ten seconds, like memory. You know, yes, you sir. see something and you remember for one month. Persistence is not that. Okay. Persistence is, listen, that sound, whatever has been made, okay, you're uh, able to, that sound is there in your, in your ear for little, little while, okay. Like, for example, you uh, ring a, a strike a dong, right? When it's just not tongue, no, it's tongue. Yes, it keeps ringing. You can, yes. you can see that, mm, that richness. Like, you know, the Tibetans, when they do that, uh, uh, you know, the metal is good. Okay, it has good heft and you strike the bell, right? That sound, you are able to hear it, not just the original, but the repeated vibrations also. Okay, so that is called the persistence of sound, okay? No, uh, I'm just yeah. writing this down, persistence of sound. Sir, can we tell reverberation is the overlapping of sound waves or the echo? Yeah, you're right. Reverberation, reverberation and echo are similar things, okay? Now that you brought it up, I'll just mention this here. Reverber reverberation and echo are effects of reflection of sound waves. Okay, so reverberation is also because of the property of reflection which of sound wave. Echo is also because of the reflection of sound waves. Okay, but there is a difference between them. Okay, they are not exactly the same. The cause is the same. Sound reflect, therefore I can hear sound reverberating. Sound reflects, therefore I can listen to the echo. Okay, the reflection of sound is the cause. But they are slightly different. Okay, we will discuss the distinction. What is the difference between reverberation and echo? Okay, so let me come back to persistence of sound. Okay, so the human ear is able to hear the sound, okay, for some time, okay, let's say 0.2 seconds, okay, means it is there in, in our ear, not just for that one particular millisecond, but for 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds, you can hear the same sound, like not just ma, but mm, right, that humming thing. So that is what is called the persistence of sound. Okay, and it is because of the property of reflection. He is not hearing the same sound in his brain. It is that here he is hearing this sound. Here is also hearing this sound, which is coming to him in a 0 0.05 second. He is also able to hear this sound, which is coming back in, like say, 0 .00, uh, 0 0.07 seconds, right? So first one he heard in. 
let's say point uh, one second. This sound he is hearing in point one two second. This sound he is hearing in point one five second. So over a period of this, the sound is persisting in his memory, in his ear. Are you able to follow this? Yes, sir. Okay, pehla wala ye aagya, dusra wala hai, tisra wala hai. Maybe one more he will listen. Okay, all these sounds are very close to each other. So it feels as if the sound is in his ears for a longer period of time. Okay, so that is called persistence. Make a note of this. Am I sharing the one note for you guys? Yes, sir. Hmm. So here, and it's reflections. Now, here we are not talking about echo. We are talking about reverberation. Okay, when I say reverberation means you think of one room. And then, you know, between the speaker or the this thing and the listener, right? You say that multiple sound waves are hitting the ceiling, hitting the, you know, back, uh, you know, the opposite wall and uh, reaching him, maybe hitting the floor and reaching him, right? So these are all reflected sound waves, all with close, very close, they're closely uh, reaching me at close intervals, one after the other. So the human mind does not think they are different sounds. Because if I say ma and then ma, so there is a lot of time gap between them. Here there is no time gap. They are happening one very close to the other with a very small amount of time difference between them. So the human ear thinks that the sound is still, I'm able to hear the original sound also. So this fellow has stopped making the sound. Even though he has stopped making that sound, I'm still, the sound is still persisting in my ear. That's because of multiple reflected sounds are reaching me, one behind the other, at very close intervals. So if you see the time difference is like 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, those kind of time intervals. Did you follow this, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Whereas when you say echo, no? Supposing this fellow is here, okay, and jobless fellow is yelling, okay, like Ribab now is very jobless, he keeps yelling all the time. So what happens is the original sound wave is going like this, let's say, okay, and he is able to, this uh, travels like this, hits the, you know, nearby obstacle, I've drawn a hill, and it bounces back. Okay, so let me tall, draw a tall person. So this is the original sound going, hit it and it came back, okay? So what happens is, as a person who is making a sound, okay, assume that uh, there is some obstacle behind also, okay? So this fellow is hearing his own voice. Let's say I say, ah, uh, I can hear it for the first time. And then this ah is traveling here. I have shouted. So it's got sufficient strength. Hit the obstacle, maybe a building or a hill. And it is traveling back. It traveled this much distance. It traveled this much distance. And then it came to my ear. Okay. Now, the time is going. How much time did it take for it to reach me? How much time did it take to reach me?
supposing I'm shouting in air. Come on, guys. At the same time, I took the reason. So, don't... Uh, Yeah, you're right. But I want you to tell me how much time, actual time it took to reach me. And I told you he's shouting in air. So is it the distance? Is it the distance? Is distance equal to time? No, sir. I'm just uh, like... And like uh, the time it took for it to like reflect back and come back to you. Yeah, because you see, this is the he made the sound. It went here, traveled a distance d, bounced back again, traveled a distance b, reached me. I'm saying, how much time did it take? Uh, can you tell the speed of uh, sound in air? I gave it to you. Three, no, three thirty meters. Per second. Mm -hmm. 330 meters per second. I ask you to take this. So, sir, have to find time, sir. Hmm. How? So, do we know frequency? So, use distance speak. Say again? Use distance, speed, and time. Ah, tell me now, what is the time it took here? Yeah? E by 330. Yes, sir. Distance by speed. Riba, can you please pause, think and answer. See, it, it traveled D here. It bounced back. It traveled D here and then it reached me. Uh, it's 2D. Very good. So it is 2D divided by what? 330. 330. 330. Okay. So, 3 by. yeah, 2D by V. Okay. V is the velocity or speed that is 330. 2D by V. Okay. So it is taken so much because let's say this is 1000 meters. Okay. Here it is traveling 1000 meters. Total distance is traveling is 2000 meters. And we know the sound is 330 meters per second. So it is going here, bouncing back. So if you divide it like this, we will say it took me 20 by 3 or it took me 6 seconds. Okay, approximately 6 seconds to reach. Okay, so time is equal to 2D by V, velocity speed of sound. Okay. Now, if this time is greater than 0 0.1 second, okay, I have given you a formula, T is equal to 2D by V, okay? Supposing I'm calculating, some distance is there, I'm calculating, and you got a time, like you got a time 6 seconds, okay? You might get a time greater than 0 0.1 second, okay? Then the human ear is able to distinguish the original sound and the echo. 0.1 second ka farak chahiye usko between two sounds. Then it knows ah, this sound and the other sound they are not the same, they are different. Are you following this? Okay, so it will say ah, 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 ah the sounds it will it will hear different, different sounds when you shout the name. The, it will not know it is a it will not appear it as a single sound. Okay, so there is a minimum condition uh, there is a condition for us to hear an echo. Okay, that condition is the time between this sound and its reflection has to be greater than zero point one seconds.
Can you make note of this? This is a very important uh, uh, information from exam point of view. Tanush, can you note pani koppa? Ni hero mari chumma padam matram ke kada. Make note also. Okay, and do the work. Done, sir. Okay. So, now that I have told you that yeah, if you want to hear the echo, the time should be 0.1 second for the sound to go, go some distance and reach you. Can you tell me the minimum distance required for an echo? So is it 500 meters? Can you base it on calculation or it's just a guess? You base it on calculation uh, okay, because I've yes, told sir. It'll take like uh, approximately one second for the like, uh, voice to travel back. No, but I told you 0.1 second. For 10 meters. Are you basing it on calculation? No. Base it on calculation. I told you for an echo, the minimum time required for the sound to travel back to you is 0.1 second. Okay, if the if you make a sound and you uh, you hear the neck the echo first echo in 0.1 second, then you can, you can make out. Are echo echo Otherwise, it's like reverberation. You can't make out that they are separate sounds. You're following what I'm saying? Uh, if you are hearing the sound in very close intervals, okay, like you heard the sound ma, and then you're hearing the next sound ma, and the third sound ma, okay, this is like t is equal to zero. This is t is equal to 0 0.05 seconds. This is t is equal to 0 0.07 seconds, right? Uh, so you are hearing the sound in quick succession, right? Then the ear cannot say you heard three sounds. It will say I heard only one sound, but it is persisting in my ear for a period of 0 0.07 seconds. Are you following this? The ear will say no, eighty sound aya. Only one sound came, but that sound seemed to persist in me for some time. 0 0.07 seven seconds it persisted. Okay. Whereas if you hear the first sound ma now, and you hear the next sound ma in 0.12 seconds. Okay, so see see here the difference is greater than 0.1. Okay, then it will say, ha, pehla wala ma tha ye, ye dusra wala ma hai. You are able to say, uh, hear them, distinguish them as two separate sounds. And if you hear the next ma in another 0.1 seconds, supposing you say 0.24 seconds, right? Then you say, ha, this is the first sound, this is the second sound, this is the third sound. I am able to hear three separate sounds. The sound is not persisting in your ear. You are able to distinguish them one from the other. Okay, so I have given you the fact that the uh, minimum time the ear requires between sounds is 0 0.1 second. If that is the case, what should be the distance between you and the obstacle? So, uh, 0.0003 meter. What is the calculation you did? So, 33. Who is that? So, Ranveer. Anyone else has got a different answer? 24.75. Yes, sir. Even I got 24.75. 24. 
Ranveer, Ribo, and Riddhi, explain yourself. Sir, so 330, like the speed is speed of sound, is mm. equal to 2D by 0 0.15. Mm. So 330 into 0.15 is equal to 2D. 49.5 is equal to... Hold 2D. on. 2D by V is equal to 0 0.1. This is what you use, no? Yes. Okay. I am adding and 33 by 2. Yeah. So 2D by 330 is equal to 0 0.1 or 2D is equal to 0 0.1 into 330. That means this is, 30. this is 33 or D is equal to 33 by 2. Okay. Or approximately 16.5. Yeah, 17, you can say 7, because sometimes it is 330, as we saw, it is 340 in air, no? Standard, if you take 340, then this becomes 34. So, 34 by 2 is becoming 17 meters, okay? No, but that I think means... it is 0.15 because you said that uh, time between sound and reflection has to be 0.15. No, 0 0.1 I said, not 0.15. Yes, I said, then yeah, yeah, see. 17 only. Yeah, when it is greater than 0 0.1 seconds, okay, or it is like greater than or equal to, so you put the minimum time, you don't take, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, no, minimum most time you should take, greater than 0 0.1, which is 0 0.1, okay, so you take that uh, T as 0 0.1 itself, okay, uh, okay, so that it's like, if T is greater than or equal to 0 0.1 seconds, then echo. Okay. So you, five, sir. That's why I came in. Ah, no problem. No problem. That's why I said Ranveer, Riddhi, and Ribo, both of all three of you got the concept. You actually put that in the formula. Okay. And you kind of did it. So it is 34 meters. 2D is 34 meters, or D is equal to 17 meters. Okay. So if you are here and you have an obstacle, okay which is 17 meters away from you. Okay, such that when you make a yelling sound, you have 17 meters and 17 meters back, a total of 34 meters. Okay, then the time taken for the sound to reach you is 0 0.1 second using the formula T is equal to 2D by V. Then the ear will say, ha, mujhe abhi eco samaj mein hai. I am able to hear the echo. Okay. Your room is never 17 meters. Your room at best is going to be, okay, in our normal flats, houses and all, 4 or 5 meters in length, 20 feet. Okay. So you can't have an echo. But if you have a long hall, okay, or, you know, minimum you should have 17 meters in length. Each uh, 1 meter means uh, approximately 3 feet if you take, okay. So this is like 21, 51, 51 feet length if you have, then you can hear an echo. Did you guys understand this? Yes, sir. Yes. So then in empty rooms, why are there echoes? Yeah, empty rooms, uh, they reverberate. Yes, sir. Okay, when you when you have an empty room, when you join a flat and there is no furniture, if you sing a song, you like your own voice. Okay, that's because of positive reverberations. The room acoustics is such that you're hearing the reflections of the sound and it is, you know, it's giving a nice feel to you. The minute you put your sofa set, you put your curtains, you put table, chair, other furniture, majority of the sound is getting absorbed. So that pleasing effect uh, which you heard earlier when the room was empty is no longer there. Mm, got it, sir. Yeah, but that's not echo. That is a reflection of sound, reverberation. Because okay. the time for you to reach, the sounds to reach your ear is very quick. In a matter of few, you know, 0 0.05 seconds. Greater than, less than 0 0.1 second. Okay, it's less than 0 0.1 second. Therefore, it, it is classified as reverberation. Greater than 0 0.1 second is classified as echo. 
Arun, did you follow this, my dear? Yes. Okay. So in this figure, which I'm sharing you, does the listener sitting in the sofa here listen to the sound less than 0.1 second or more than 0.1 second now? So it depends on the distance, right? Very great answer. It depends on it. Okay. But this is reverberation. The heading itself, I said reverberation. Okay. That means she is uh, able to perceive the sound within 0.1 second. Otherwise, it will be echo for her. But it's a great answer. Okay. Sir, you didn't tell me the dimensions of the room. Okay. Guys, are we good? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, Ranveer, can you please um, uh, read the text? Help me with the text. Reverberation definition. Reverberation is the phenomenon of the persistence of sound after it has stopped due to multiple reflections with surfaces such as furniture, people, air, etc. within a closed surface. These reflections build up with each reflection and decay gradually as they are absorbed by the surfaces of objects in the enclosed space. Yeah, that's why all these definitions seem quite a mouthful. Okay. So, you just say reverberation is the phenomenon of persistence of sound due to multiple reflection and stop it at that. Reverberation is the phenomenon of persistence of sound due to multiple reflections in a closed room. Reverberation is the phenomenon of persistence of sound due to multiple reflections in a closed room. Did you make a note of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Aryan, tell me what you made a note. So I'm talking about Don't write the whole thing. Yeah, you... Simple things yourself will not remember. If you complicated things, they will forget. That's why I'm repeating it three times. What is it that you made a note? Uh, the reverberation of persistence, uh, persistence due to the reflection in this closed room. In a closed room. Okay. Riddhi, what is the main note you made? So, reverberation is the phenomenon of persistence of sound due to multiple reflections in a closed room. Due to multiple reflections in a closed room. Arin, just make it like that, okay? Yeah. Uh, Ranveer, go ahead and read me the advantages of reverberation, bro. Advantages of reverberation. Reverberations do wonders when it comes to musical symphonies and orchestra halls. When the right amount of reverberation is present, the sound quality gets enhanced drastically. This is the reason why sound engineers are appointed during the construction of these halls. Okay, so acoustics is a science by itself because you have to, there is a designated area where the musical instruments are supposed to uh, play or the speaker has to speak and then there is a space for the audience. Okay, so there, it's the height of the room, the material used, okay, the shape of the roof, all that is very meticulously planned, a very expensive affair to design the room such that the uh, audience get a spectacular effect. Okay. So those guys are called sound engineers. Okay. So go ahead and tell me the disadvantages of reverberation. If a room has no sound absorbing surfaces like walls, roofs and floors, the sound is said to bounce back between the surfaces and it takes a long time as the sound dies. In such a room, the listener will have difficulty registering the speaker. This is because he tends to hear about direct and reflected sound waves. And also if these reverberations are more ex excessive, the sound becomes muddy and garbled. Okay, because reverberations are good provided the room is designed properly. Okay, but if the room is not designed properly and, you know, uh, uh, see, uh, for the sound to have a pleasing effect, certain surfaces should absorb sound, certain surfaces should reflect sound. Okay, 
But if such care is not taken and every surface is reflecting sound, then for him, okay, he is hearing. Uh, this fellow says ma first, okay, he hears ma. And then because of some reverberation, he is hearing ma. And the speaker has now said pa, he is hearing pa also, direct sound, okay. That means this sound is getting garbled. He's, he's here, he is hearing different sounds which are overlapping with each other. So he is not clear what is the sound he is hearing. So it sounds very muddy and garbled. Okay? Therefore, a proper design of the room with right absorbing material, with right reflecting material is required for you to get a pleasing effect. Okay, Reverberations can be both pleasing as well as uh, horrible if you are not designed it properly. Are you guys okay with this? Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. We will take a quick break. Please um, come back in eight minutes' time. Uh, Tanush and Arin, come within the scheduled time. All right, so this is what we discussed about echo. Uh, the gray ones are the incident rays going and hitting the obstacle, which is at a minimum distance of 17 meters or more. Okay, it can be 17, 100 meters also is fine, but less than 17 will not work for us. Okay, and then the blue wave is the reflected wave, it's going bouncing back and coming. Between the original sound and the reflected sound, time difference is greater than 0.1 second. Okay, then uh, this person is going to hear an echo. Okay, are we clear with this, guys? All right, Tanush, did you understand this part? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, Tanush, what are the takeaways of all the bashings that I've given you guys? Huh, what did you learn from that? Tell me one point from you, one point from Aaron, one point from Shreyans. Huh? Revision. Take Same revision. day or the next day you have to revise. Okay. Aaron, what is your takeaway? Sorry, after practice, uh, the phrases are not necessary. Yeah, you should study immediately. Shreyans, what will happen if you don't do that? You forget, you will ask, sir, did we start sound at all? Okay. So I have shared an Instagram post called the forgetting curve. Okay. I will uh, please uh, look at it. I will share it with you. It's all, there's a lot of science behind it. Okay. If you don't do the same day, then 50% of your memory is going to be lost and you will keep wasting time again and again to revise it. So please do that. And you have to solve numericals. Solving numericals is the easiest way to Keep the concept in your head. That is the reason why we give assignments. L0, L1 is like cognitive. It's called see and tell. I'm able to see something and I'm able to say the concept. Simple ones. Okay, the next one is uh, where some numericals are there, where you have to apply. The third one is hots. So if you are doing see and tell, uh, simple numericals and then hots kind of questions, you will most likely remember the concept for a long period of time. Okay? Because it's just not teaching. You should also know the principles of learning. Right? Both these are important. Alright. So, uh, when we are talking about this uh, sound wave, one important uh, or incidental, this is a transverse wave. Okay? 
So you heard tsunamis, right? In tsunamis, what happens is in ocean, there is a small disturbance because of an earthquake, okay? Uh, here, but here the water depth is high. So what happens is there is a small bump that happens here, okay? And it's a wave. The wave starts traveling towards the shore, okay? But what happens in the shore is the uh, depth of water reduces, okay? But what happens is the displaced water has to come. When the depth of water is, the, uh, becomes less, the wave becomes big, okay? So as the waves are traveling towards the shore, you see them growing in size. And that's what you call as the tsunami, okay? Japan is an unfortunate country which has been hit by multiple tsunamis, okay? And the last one even impacted their uh, nuclear reactor. Okay, so you should... Uh, this is uh, just an incidental information, nothing to do with sound. We are talking about transverse waves here. All right, so now let's look at some other uh, aspects of human hearing. Okay, it's not that every sound that is made, we are able to hear. Okay, for example, if I, uh, you know, swing my hands, right? I am doing some vibrations, right? But we cannot hear it, okay? The reason is the number of vibrations that I'm doing is less than 20 hertz, right? So, Arin, what do you mean by less than 20 hertz? So, the number of vibrations per second is like less than, less than 20. 20. So less than 20 means it's like I'm trying to uh, make a vibration. This is like uh, two, three vibrations per second I'm doing. Okay. But if I have a humming bee and keep it close to my ear, right? If the humming bee is going to oscillate its wings at much higher than 20 hertz. So you'll be able to hear the buzzing sound, right? So the human here cannot... Uh, identify sounds less than 20 hertz, okay? On the lower side. Similarly, it cannot identify sounds which are very, very high frequency. We can at best listen to 20,000 hertz. Beyond 20,000 hertz also, we cannot, the human ear cannot identify that sound, okay? So we say that the band is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Did you follow that, Tanush? What do you mean by we cannot like understand it like we can't hear it or it's too loud? Yeah. We will do a practical thing to find out. Just give me one minute. We'll do that. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, Tanush, can you read the text on the PPT next two bullet points? Tanush. Yaar, to kya yaar? To on, camera on kar, repeat the question mat bol, irritating hota hai mujhe. Can you read the bullet points please? Less than 20 hertz is called infras infrasonic sounds. Hmm. Greater than 20,000 hertz is called ultrasonic sound. Ultrasonic, okay. So infrasonic sounds you cannot hear. And ultrasounds also you cannot hear, okay? Sorry. Hmm. The bats produce ultrasonic sounds to navigate because they're blind, so like they use ultrasonic sounds to navigate. Yes, very true. We'll discuss some interesting facts about that, but I want you to quickly make a note about you know human hearing's capacity, the range, and the fact that less than 20 hertz is called infra, greater than 20,000 is called ultra. Just make a note of this. Don't worry, I've muted it. That's it. All right. So, no one as, yeah, as Aaron was pointing out, no. There are some animals which are capable of um, listening to ultra uh, infra, okay? Infrasonic sounds. Examples are rhinoceros. I think uh, 
ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ the insect is reflecting the sound waves okay the bat is able to listen to it he cannot see it he is able to listen to the sounds and in his brain he is able to make the picture of the bee he can attack and he can eat it okay so it's not all the time required for us to have eyes the animals are such that they can see because of their ears they they are you know they make the sound they get the vibration back they are able to pictureize it in their brains uh, you know uh, they are able to see because of hearing okay and uh, they effectively hunt animals but for that they have to make the sound if they they don't make this ultra sound they can't get the bounce back the reflection then they can't see so bats are making the sound all the time okay another example of uh high frequency sound is can you give me some examples guys some other animals so, uh, fighter plane fighter plane bada animals sir okay. whales ah uh, dolphins and whales okay sir what about sonar do ah huh? sonar ah i will tell you about sonar dolphins and whales also they communicate okay uh more than 20000 hertz okay and they are able to uh, based on the sound they are able to identify objects one is communicate okay the second thing is they are also able to locate if they are having an obstacle if they are having another you know fish or something in their path okay they are able to make the sound see the reflected sound and then they are able to see it in their minds okay in fact uh, that uh, property of dolphins to be able to locate objects in their path okay is called echolocation echolocation just make a note about animals rhinos is less and uh, bats are high okay whales also are greater than 20000 they can hear so can you repeat what echolocation is yes i will show it to you man just give me one minute there are two things i need to do for you um uh, one is um talk to you about uh, less than 20 greater than 20000 and then i'll show you what you mean by echolocation did you guess me so yes sir mm -hmm. okay all right so i am just sharing my screen about what uh, ardhi asked so locating something because of sound wave is called echolocation like i mentioned about bats being able to locate insects or prey by emitting sound waves 
and getting the reflected reflect uh, reflections and then knowing that that their prey is there okay at certain distance being able to locate because of sound waves is called echolocation echo locate echolocation similarly this dolphin is able to identify that its prey is there in front it may not be able to see because the water may be muddy or you know the vision is uh, limited under the sea it could be dark also in great depth right where sunlight is not there but using this uh, ultrasonic waves dolphins are able to hunt by emitting song waves and getting the uh, but they also uh, you can also come to another depth of the ocean like if you yeah, yeah. Use... that is uh, you know there is something called sonar okay yes sonar I'll talk, yeah i'll talk to you about that too okay so some of the uh, ultrasounds are like great for us okay there are apart from dolphins and bats locating their prey we have made use of ultrasonic waves in medical field okay uh, very uh, we good use of uh, ultrasonic waves in medical field the first diagram that you see here is you know when you go to the doctor they do an ultrasound to locate tumors okay you don't need to operate and physically see they have some round instrument with them and that round instrument will vibrate it it, it sends out ultrasonic waves you are able to see kidney stones tumor babies how the fetus is developing inside whether it is a healthy baby or not you can even see the heartbeat and the movement of the hands and feet of a, a human fetus okay all this you are able to see only because of ultrasound medical applications right on the right what you see is called an ecg what is the full form of an ecg guys from the heart thing oh what is the full form of ecg yes it is right your it is related to heart Full form of ECG. It's called echocardiogram. Make a note of this. Okay. ECG is echocardiogram where they will put lot of uh, probes like round round probes they will put with the glue and then the machine will make sounds. And when the heart is pumping and the blood is going out, okay, it is able to generate the pictures. You can know how the valves are functioning, what is the rate of flow of blood. Is the heart able to completely remove the blood through its various, uh, you know, valves? All that you can calculate, you can identify. Okay, so we have discussed two. One is ultrasound for locating tumor fetus and then for ECG, three in medical field. Then if you look at it in manufacturing, okay, you will have long uh, pipelines, okay. And supposing they, they are uh, transferring gas from, let's say, Russia to Europe, okay. If there are cracks, these cracks are not visible to the naked eye but the gas will keep leaking, okay? So what they do, people who are in maintenance, okay, once they make the structure, they will use ultrasonic waves to identify if there is any flaw, okay? So for example, if there is no flaw in the surface, the waves will go and uh, you will detect them. But if there is a flaw, then they will reflect back and you can actually visualize the crack. Then they will go and take the uh, corrective action okay so you need not uh, you can just draw this diagram and say that if crack is there the crack is going to reflect it because there is discontinuity in the material right so you will be able to there are sensors which will detect it and can identify pinpoint the location of the crack but if there's a crack in the north reflect right that's all. So uh, it will reflect differently. See, if a metal, the metal is there continuously, it will allow the waves to flow through. 
okay if you are having a crack in between there is uh, some air gap in between okay so those waves will not flow through the way they are they should have right so for example here these waves are flowing through properly no problem but because there is a crack there is a deformity there is an air gap or some gap here they will reflect in a different way so the sensors here can identify or here you put the det detectors these detectors will say yaar yahan pe mujhe wave nahi mila so they will be able to visualize the crack here because that sound is got reflected it didn't reach the detector Did you understand that, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you make a note of it? Mm, one second, sir. That particular diagram you need to make a note of because it kind of comes in the exam. Maybe as a bullet point, but I always believe in if you can show something on paper, it will be good. Are you done? One second, sir. One second, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, like you mentioned, just give me one minute. Can you see the screen, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so this sonar full form is sound navigation and ranging. Make a note of this. What is sonar? S O is for sound. N is for navigation. A is for and R is for ranging. Sound navigation and ranging. Ranging means finding the distance. कितना दूर पे है? Okay, so once again, as Tanush and Arun pointed out, you can have many useful applications, right? You can find the depth of the ocean. Okay, you can find out if uh, there are any submarines, right, uh, hidden under the uh, waiting under the ocean floor. Okay, so many of the ships they will have this sonar. They will keep giving this ultrasonic waves. So if there is a submarine hidden here. these waves will go strike the submarine and will bounce back in the so in the ship's uh, uh, sonar you can actually see the shape of the uh, obstacle and you will know are baba yahan pe submarine hai and you can find out at what location it is okay so oil exploration many of the oil fields are available under the seabed okay so when you want to do oil exploration you will take this if it is a normal sand or rock under the seabed the waves will be reflected in one way but if there are oil deposits you will be able to get a different kind of uh, reflection and you can identify that yaar yahan pe oil hai so when you are doing oil exploration under the sea again sonar is going to be useful Shreya, did you follow this, ma? Yes. Sir, even like uh, for radar to detect the planes and all, right? Yeah, that is uh, in air, correct. This is sound in water. Radar also is. Uh, you give aeroplanes use that for um, detecting the 
um, missile. For example, nowadays you've seen, no, uh, Hamas uh, has launched so many missiles, right? Yes, sir. Against, so the Israeli uh, uh, have some different things. Yeah, you have this Iron Dome, uh, which Israel uses, isn't it? So once this missile is uh, launched, are you able to see my OneNote, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so there will be some, uh, uh, you know, they will, they will always be emitting the, uh, what do you call, uh, red, uh, radio, radar, uh, the waves, ultrasonic waves, okay? So this ultrasonic waves will know, hey, there is an incoming missile, okay? It will detect it because of the um, radar capabilities. And then what it is also doing, it, it, it is connected to um, what do you call their own missiles? So right? anti missile system. Yeah, anti missiles. So it will say, hey, this fellow is here. His path is going to be like this. Karke, it will communicate to this. So this will go and, uh, you know, in a trajectory, it will map the trajectory. It will identify. Now it is here. After 15 seconds, it is going to be here. Okay, so this fellow will go in a trajectory such that it will come and meet this guy and destroy him. Okay, so this entire system is called the Iron Dome system, where complex, uh, uh, you know, uh, radars are used, you know, not only to identify the enemy missiles, but also to communicate the information to their own anti-missiles, anti okay. Many US and Russian um, systems are available, okay, where uh, they will automatically be launched. There is no human involved here. So this system is communicating with this system and giving it the data. So this system knows the path and automatically it adjusts its elevation and it will fly so that it can intercept it midair. Very complex uh, physics is used here. Okay. A bit of this you will learn in grade 11 under the topic called projectiles. Projectile motion. Motion in two dimension. Okay. Um, so how people are using to save lives you see. Okay. Are you able to follow this guys? Yes. Okay. And finally, the one which I wanted to show you about um, uh, the 20 hertz, 30 hertz, just give me one minute. There she is. Okay. I'm sharing something. Can you please confirm if you're able to see this, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. You can, uh, I will give this uh, link to you. You can just copy and keep it uh, uh, later, okay? But it's something fun to play play with, okay? For example, I'm having 440 hertz out here. I can play the sound. Confirm to me if you're able to hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're able to hear, no? So that's what is 440 frequency. If I lower it, can you see the effect of it? It's become a low hum. Can you hear it now? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, that's because I am uh, trying to uh, share it from my laptop to you. You, If I give you the link, this is 134 hertz. 134 hertz, you are not able to hear. Okay, but if you play it in a little more volume in your own uh, laptop, you may be able to see the hum, okay? I am just sending this to you in your uh, text, okay? Zoom text. You can copy it and keep it. There is a small hum. That hum is not, it cannot be shared over a Zoom meeting, okay? Uh, maybe you would like to experiment later okay so if you go to 20 you can't say hear anything at all even here while my laptop is making the sound even i cannot hear it 
with maximum volume. Okay, but if I cross twenty, I will be able to. If I am young, I will be able to make a note of it. One fifty three onwards, you can hear. Can you hear now? No, sir. You can't hear it, but uh, maybe you can um, try that. Yeah, I have anyway given it. You can try it at your end. Can you hear this? Eight twenty three. Yes, sir. But if I go high frequency, fourteen thousand, you stop hearing it, isn't it? If your ears are very sharp, you may be able to when you are doing it locally. Ten thousand two sixty is a very shrill one. Can you hear this? But if I increase it further, you can't hear. Okay. If you are young, you can hear till twenty thousand. Beyond twenty thousand, you can't hear it. Okay. So that is what is called the uh, human range. All right. So. I'm stopping this because for uh, Arin it is impacting. He is listening in the earphones. No. Did you all ah, just the tone generator? You can uh, take it, copy it, and keep it, and then play around with it. Okay. It can uh, raise. It can give you sounds of different frequencies. Ariti, did you understand, ma? Why you can't hear below certain frequency? It's because number of vibrations are so low, you can't hear it, and the number of vibrations are so high beyond twenty thousand, you can't hear it. Human ear cannot make. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's what I have in the class today. I will once again give you some questions more around echo, uh, and you know, uh, all the questions around sonar is based on. Distance and time. Okay, for example, they'll say, "I am sharing my one note. Can you see it?" No, sir. No. Okay. So, for example, they'll say, "This is the ship here." Okay, and uh, there is some uh, submarine out here, uh, and this fellow is. Uh, giving some waves he is able to listen it in some time he will say time is equal to 10 seconds okay and this is all sea water okay when he is talking about sonar don't uh, think <coughs> think velocity of sound is 330 <laughs> we have seen in sea water it's around 1500 meters per second, okay, or 14, 19, they will give you, okay, so they will say find the depth, okay, so for all these problems, you will use the simple formula, T is equal to two times distance divided by the velocity of the sound, okay, whatever they are giving you, okay, so this is uh, the distance D, onward journey, this is the return journey distance, two times D, okay, so whatever uh, time that you get, that is for twice the distance, okay? So based on that, you find out the depth. All formulae is based on T is equal to 2D by velocity of sound. Okay, and if he's telling about uh, in air, a person is sh uh, shouting and he is able to hear the echo after some time, find the distance of the hill or the building, right? Here you have to use velocity of sound in air. He may give it to you, but otherwise you take it as 330 meters per second. You assume it. Most often than not, they will tell you the velocity of sound in air. Okay, so you can calculate at what distance the object is or the obstacle is. Okay, so my questions will be based on this simple formula. Please use that to calculate. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, if you guys have any doubts, you can stay back and address those questions now. Um, sir, can you send me the um, recording of last class? Yeah, ma'am. I will locate it. Uh, if I have recorded, I'll send it to you. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yeah.
Sure.